Ayo, oh, what's good everybody? Welcome back to the video. I hope you're having a good day. I am. And so basically Justin Cool made a video on Chris Tyson, or kinda like the update. I made a video a few months ago. A bunch of people made a video on it actually. And recently I made a video about somebody on Dr. Phil that was trans and it got taken down. So anyway, hopefully this one doesn't get taken down. I don't think it will. YouTube has a little bit lets you have freedom of speech. Not much though. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, let's get into it. On April 6th in 2023, thanks to one single tweet, Chris Tyson became one of the most hated people on the internet due to his hormone replacement therapy. As he should have. It was brutal, as months of hate, abuse and bullying ensued. With many opinions and videos getting posted about the situation and Sunny V2 even questioning how it would affect Mr. Beast. W video by the way, I highly recommend you check that out after this video. But what kind of effect did all of this have on Chris himself? What does he look like today? And did his relationship with Mr. Beast change at all? Well, it's time to find out. First, to quickly recap how this drama came about, we have to go back to March of 2022. Yeah, there was one of the Beast Reacts videos, that's where I kind of like picked up on something's off. And I was thinking about this and I went to YouTube and no one's made a video on it. It really only started when Sunny made a video. But anyway, let's get back to it. When Chris began displaying more feminine traits and slowly started changing his appearance. He got his nails done at a nail tech, shaved his beard and grew his hair out, resulting in him having to prove his identification in four different customs and even wore different clothes and accessories, which already prompted a lot of hate and criticism from not only his own followers but also Mr. Beast's fanbase. At first, First, he was vague about his true feelings behind these changes. Uh, let's see what Twitter's got to have about it. You know, tw Twitter always drops like the most straight facts ever. They're not just a bunch of like 19 year old femboys talking about whatever kind of crap they want. You know, let let's just let's see what Twitter's got to say about this. As he just labeled it as eating better and taking his mental health more seriously. But how was his mental health linked to his change in appearance? Well, the clues to that mystery would continue to unfold over time. However, we would soon find out the real reason as to why Chris was dealing with his mental health. As the internet quickly found out that Chris divorced his wife, which he confirmed on his Twitter, that he showed up to the Kids' Choice Awards looking more feminine than ever. Uh, yo, picture this. Imagine you're going to an event with a bunch of kids easily affected or influenced kids who don't need to know about all this garbage dress like your wife imagine they were still together and bro really walks out of the closet looking like that any wife would just take their kid and walk out the door Beast that he found himself in a tweet defending trans rights and ultimately made the controversial announcement that he had been doing HRT for the past two months, which is a medical procedure for changing genders, finally confirming what many were already expecting. Chris was becoming transgender and did so to finally feel like his true self. I okay, I don't get this. His true self? Did I did I um hear that correctly? His um true self? Um I don't think that's your true self, your true self is a man. Hate to break it to you. You're not a woman. You'll never be one. You're not even close to one. No matter how hard you try, you're never gonna be one. You will always be a man. So just take heed with that. And while he followed this up with a statement on the complex process of undergoing this treatment and how it should be made easier, people weren't too happy with this announcement and a barrage of hate started coming in. Surely this hate ain't coming from Twitter because you know Twitter's just a happy just fantasy land full of 100% positive and secure people. His fatherhood got brought into question, his capability of making decisions, and the Mr. Beast crew were called out for being yes men cowards, which Mr. Beast easily countered with a ratio. I, for anyone that don't know, the guy who called them yes man cowards, who got countered with a ratio, he had like 20 followers before this, and Mr. Beast thought that he needed to ratio him and get him a bunch of followers which he later thanked mr beast for that too and that just shows how mr beast is acting so petty about this and wants attention taken away from him so he doesn't get stressed out which apparently he already is that he has to try to ratio someone with 20 followers that's pitiful when he has like 40 mil 
As a matter of fact, his friends were extremely happy about his decision, despite the backlash. And a long few months of criticism and hate were around the corner for Chris. He fought this endlessly, defending his son, teaching critics, and simultaneously trying to get his family to understand the situation as well. But where there is drama, there is an opportunity for monetization. And content creators covered this situation to the fullest extent. More and more videos started popping up. But on the 13th of April in 2023, Sunny too, one of the biggest commentary channels on YouTube, decided to drop his own take. I just want to go ahead and say, this video got so much hate when it wasn't even bad. People were just so butthurt that somebody wanted to make something even kind of criticizing Chris, which, I mean, it wasn't really criticizing, but near the end of the video, it did show a little bit of Sonny's opinion on it. When usually commentators kind of cover the situation, but he kind of got personal, which I think is good. You need to get to know your audience. Even if it's three and a half million people, you still do. And anyway, this, I mean, th so many people are mad about this. This was honestly a W video by a W channel. And released a video titled, Why Chris Tyson Will Soon Be a Nightmare for Mr. Beast. This video seemed quite harmless at first, simply explaining the Chris Tyson situation and its effect on the Mr. Beast brand. But in typical Sunny V2 fashion, he managed to make some questionable claims again, and it caused the drama to completely spiral out of control. Yes, this video from Sunny V2 caused quite a commotion, as none other than Mr. Beast himself decided to respond to it. Has anyone else noticed how Mr. Beast has been commenting more recently? Almost like he's getting more insecure. Like, honestly, have you seen, um, there's one video, for instance, I'll try to pop it up on the screen. But anyway, he commented on Shani something who does videos saying that there's a chance that his newest video might be fake. He got so butthurt from that. He made a whole, like, 10 sentence comment saying about how they put gas on it and stuff like, bro, come on. Now Mr. Beast and Sunny V2 actually go way back, as Jimmy used to be a massive fan of his content. And he even participated in an interview about the story of Mr. Beast Burger. But this relationship completely broke down when Mr. Beast called his title absurd, and got sick of all the transphobia surrounding his friend. However, Jimmy wasn't alone with his opinion, as Sunny's biggest critic, Little Joel, called him out. I honestly think that if Sunny V2 had just come out and said, I don't like trans people, it would be better than this. And many others talking about the video being insane. I don't know who Little Joel is, but all I know is he is, he is like, not even as intimidating as a Discord mod. Like, honestly, this guy, he looks so feminine and woke. Like, I'm, I just want to put that out there. Transphobic, hilariously bad, terrible, the worst video on YouTube, and how Sunny V2 ruined his reputation with it. Yet, the most viral response with more than 2.2 million views was that from D'Angelo Wallace, picking this video apart minute by minute, and criticizing all of the comments supporting this video. Even adding an extra part where he included the opinion of massive YouTubers that normally wouldn't even get involved in drama, also agreeing with his criticism. So, it seemed like all of this support was a sign of the tide turning for Chris, right? Well, sort of. Because after this video, Chris decided to focus more on the positive comments that the new community he made around him, with more and more people writing encouraging replies under his tweets and sharing their own HRT journey. I don't care about seeing any of that. Every time I see a trans guy, it's just disgusting, so let's just skip, skip past that. But, on the other hand, hate and rumors also continued, with some saying that Chris made the whole crew feel awkward during a live stream and Sunny V2 also making this claim. Honestly, just to put this out there, even though that it was it was super awkward, I just want to say it was like one of the most awkward YouTube, it was almost as awkward as the Anthony Padilla Chris interview, but anyway, th there's a reason they took it down. Like, Mr. Beast has done bad videos before he's had bad thumbnails but why would they take that down a hundred like mystery box fan art which is supposedly um sharing your community which is good but why would he take that down though like just because people are hating on it like like grow a backbone bro but chris did make these bizarre jokes about jimmy being female making him incredibly uncomfortable oh my god jimmy look they drew you jimmy they drew you so well it looks just like you 
others assuming that Chris had been fired from the crew, people faking DMs from Mr. Beast about how he only supports Chris because he is scared to get cancelled. Honestly, I don't know if he does or not. I don't think it's as simple as him saying like he does, like in front of a bunch of people. Because, yeah, he, does, he doesn't want to get cancelled. If he says anything, he will, so... I don't know. And many, many, and I mean many more hateful replies getting posted under Chris's tweets. But the question is, how did Chris deal with all of this gossip? Was he ever going to make a public response addressing everything? Yes, he was. And it would all happen a month later on the Banter Podcast. On the 10th of May, Chris joined Sapnap, George Not Found and Carl on the Banter Podcast to talk about his life. And in this episode, he also addressed the entire situation on camera for the first time ever. First of all, Carl and Chris debunked the infamous clip where Jimmy was supposedly uncomfortable with Chris sitting next to him. Uh, I love how easy it is to alter things and put it on the internet. Oh my word, that's a live stream. There's so many clips of it. How are they all going to alter it frame by frame? Carl is another one. I never liked Carl. He was always my least favorite Mr. Beast member. Bro, bro literally eats extra zesty ranch every morning in his cereal. And I, I, I don't even want to listen to anything he's got to say because everything he says just makes me feel stupid. Like, for instance, I also do. We'll do an hour and a half long live stream on Mr. Beast. They'll find one time where Jimmy isn't just explicitly smiling. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's uncomfortable. Oh my goodness. Have you not seen the whole live stream? One spot? No. The whole entire live stream almost he's like that. Except for when he gets something wholesome from a fan. He was uncomfortable that whole entire time. He explained that the internet forced him to speedrun learning about himself, that he already had these feelings since he was young, that his ex-wife Katie already knew. You guys think that Katie for the last seven years has not been living with me? She was my, well, four years my wife, three years my, um, you know, girlfriend. But it's like she was there the whole way. She was supportive in her own way. If she was supportive that whole time, I heard that she's religious. So, like, she's Christian like I am. So she probably needs to take that up with her pastor. We were both figuring it out. Proofing all the accusations of him being on bad terms with her wrong, and finally touched on the hate in the most professional way possible. Of course people are gonna attack me. Are those the real fans? Maybe, maybe not. Who cares? Like, I know that right now what I'm focusing on is being the absolute best version of myself. If you want to be the best version of yourself, then quit all this woke garbage. Forget about the internet, forget about Mr. Beast, and I'll go live in a cabin in Alaska. Don't take anything from social media don't take anything from your house go up there live on the land and see what happens when you come back if you're some feminine sissified woman quote unquote then you are not and i repeat you are not gonna be the realest version of yourself have you not seen the videos from years ago when you were supposedly struggling that's probably just a, something he's saying just to you know like help the situation would really probably only thought out the last year and a half but honestly it, it's just crazy being the best example and influence for not only my kid but millions of kids out there because that's a big responsibility honestly when i first saw this for the first time i was so angry when he said i need to be an influence for millions of kids listen you are the flat out worst influence i would ever let i would never let my kids even look an eye on you okay I don't want you to be an influence. I want you to go hide in a hole with all the other gay people. Yet, the most interesting part of this podcast was where he talked about the fact that Mr. Beast already knew about his situation since college, proving that their friendship has always been way more valuable than their relationship in business. The comments on this video were insanely positive, with many even correcting their previous judgment and feeling bad for him, which meant that the narrative was slowly shifting into a more positive one for Chris. Of course, he will always have the people hating on him, as it's a controversial topic nowadays, but he continues his journey no matter what, as he's proud of the direction he's going in. However, there are still two questions that remain unanswered. And those are, what does Chris look like today? And what does his future with Mr. Beast look like? If it was up to me, he'd be fired. And a man. That's what he would look like and his relationship with Mr. Beast would be. Well, he still replies to haters on his Snapchat from time to time, but is now focused more on sharing his journey, answering questions, and educating people. He revealed in his stories that he already started his transition all the way back in February of 2021, and that he still doesn't know which gender he really is yet. For anyone who's made it this far in the video, who's actually wondering what gender he is, I know it's a, you know, it's a very tough situation, you know, it's up to him, because, you know, he's got to make the right choice out of all 59 that there are. 
for uh, you know I, I'm leaning towards a uh, man. Yeah, he. I, I think he's a man. I mean, it's a logical answer. He looks like a man, talks like a man, and you know everything about him is a man. So um, that's my take. But that he will reveal it soon in an interview that he is doing, together with the announcement of his new name that he has been thinking about for months now. Also, the transformation in Chris's appearance keeps getting more and more noticeable as well, with his hair growing longer, his lip, neck and facial hair getting removed within 6 to 8 months, and him using profile pictures with makeup and dresses where he feels completely comfortable. I swear, that is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. I would rather, like watch like a deer get gutted and look at his twitter profile pictures so disgusting so it is safe to say that chris dealt with the hate well and he continues to work for his best friend mr beast he often shares sneak peeks of videos films advertisements for feastables works on the other channels and regularly features in main channel videos chris appeared in the ages 1 to 100 fight for 500 thousand dollars video the one dollar versus one billion dollar yacht video and the most recent train versus giant pit video and while some noticed that the duration of chris on screen decreased with him only appearing a few seconds in the ages 1 to 100 video Katie or whatever Chris's ex-wife's name is get your son away from him please and that he didn't have any interaction with Jimmy in the yacht video but the thing which gave me some kind of uncomfortable feeling was that Chris and Jimmy were not having any interaction during the whole video this quickly got put to bed in the latest Mr. Beast video as Chris appeared in multiple scenes had more lines interacted with Jimmy and showed off his usual goofy persona so it seems that there is nothing wrong and that nothing changed at all and even if Chris features less in videos so what he already stated before that he's going to come and go as he pleases as he wants to spend time with his son overall chris is doing better nowadays despite every picture that he uploads being a talking point for days currently will this ever end probably not yo 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 wait what does this remind me of as it will remain as a controversial topic for now but neither mr beast nor chris has let this situation change them or their friendship and it once again shows that true friendship will last forever i hope you enjoyed the video leave a like I terrible situation, poor Mr. Beast, even if he's um accepting trans videos and stuff or having trans people in his videos, I still think it's an L. I think his persona's an L. I think Chris is a walking L and I think whatever comes from his this Mr. Beast franchise now with Chris Trans in it is an L and I think that tr his gender is an L. I think that he is an L. I think that his opinions are an L and I think that everything his HRT, his Twitter profile pics, everything is an L.